The results can tell us something, perhaps, about what issues are motivating Americans to turn out in elections and which way these voters perhaps may go in November. In Florida, Democratic Congressman Val Demings won her party's nomination to challenge Republican Marco Rubio for his Senate seat. Demings would be the very first black senator from the state of Florida. Democratic excitement over her candidacy could, could help the party in other races, too, like the fight to defeat Republican Governor Ron DeSantis in the same state. Democrat Charlie Crist won the primary last night to take on DeSantis, and he spoke to MSNBC on Wednesday about what's at stake in that race. I think that, you know, a woman's right to choose, respecting women literally is what this is about. DeSantis doesn't. He tears them down. He tears down LGBTQ. You know, he tears down African Americans and their right to vote. It's unconscionable what he's done. But he's running for president of the United States. And if we defeat him, which I believe we will, on November the 8th, that show ends right here in Florida. The right to choose is one of the main things that Florida the election in Florida is about, Chris said, and that may have been even more true up in New York in the House race that was seen as somewhat of a bellwether of what's to come this November. Democrat Pat Ryan beat Republican Mark Molinaro in the hotly contested special election for an open House seat, and that is really important for a couple of different reasons. New York's 19th congressional district is truly, it's the swingy, swingy, swing kind of district, and it went for Biden in 2020. Trump in 2016, and for Obama in 2012 in the election before that. Ryan made abortion rights a centerpiece of the campaign messaging going into the to Tuesday's elections. And as you can see from the pink signs here saying choices on the ballot, they were all over his district. And it's important that Molinero, the Republican candidate in this particular race, he wasn't a MAGA extremist. Rather, he was considered a strong contender who ran on mainstream Republican ideas and themes against President Biden talking about inflation and crime. And yet, he still lost to a Democrat who focused like a laser on abortion rights. So you can see why Democrats believe this election victory shows that the protection of abortion rights in America is a winning message for their party in November. Starting us off tonight, Olivia Juliana, political strategy coordinator for Gen Z for Change. So great to have you back with us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So what are your main takeaways from Tuesday night's elections? I think that we're seeing what a lot of us young people and a lot of Democrats in general knew to be true, which is abortion is a winning issue. People care about women having the bodily autonomy to make choices about their own health care. And I think that that's what we saw in that New York district that you were just talking about. It's not just about whether or not you're pro-life or pro-choice. It's about the fact that Every American should have the freedom to make choices about their own body. And I think the GOP is learning a very hard lesson, which we all warned them about, which is when you start stripping Americans of their freedoms, they are going to vote you out of office. Do you think that in some ways they underestimated that backlash that you just mentioned, right? I mean, the overturning of Roe versus Wade is something they wanted to do for as long as I have been alive on the er on the earth, and you too. Um, but they finally were able to accomplish it through, you know, decades of effort, putting judge after judge after judge on the Supreme Court and making them into justices. Um, did they underestimate the backlash, though, coming at a time in 2022 when you're taking away that bodily autonomy from more than half of the American population. I absolutely think they underestimated it, but I'm not surprised that they wouldn't foresee this happening considering they don't listen to their constituents most of the time anyways. It's about profits and it's about power. And I think that now they're having to face the music for what they decided to do. These decades of fighting back against constitutional rights and stripping them from people, it's not gonna pay off for them. It's gonna be detrimental to them going into the November elections. So one of the things Democrats ask all the time, and I know this because I've been in the room in campaigns where they're like, how do we get young people to turn out to vote? So I'm going to ask you, as a young person, as a Gen Zer, I'm a millennial, so I'm old, um, but, but how do Democrats, in your view, capitalize on the anger and the energy and that backlash we've been discussing in terms of getting young people to actually vote, not just engage, not just tweet, not just post on TikTok, but to actually show up and cast a ballot? 
I think that you need to fight. You need to be conscious about what you're doing as an elected official and what you're doing as a candidate. Young people don't want to see somebody who is going to kindly ask that our rights be kept in place. They want to see someone who is going to fight for our rights to be kept in place. And I think that that's why candidates who are very vocally pro-choice, who are very vocally pro-codifying Roe v. Wade, are winning their elections because they are being passionate and fighting about the issues that young people care about. I think that a lot of young people are tired of pleasant they're tired of political marketing. They just want to see what you're going to do to deliver for the American people. And if you're actually going to fight for the will of the people and not the will of yourself, which is what we're seeing happen to the Republican Party, which is why they're being voted out. And that's why young people will vote in these elections. So speaking of delivering, one of the pieces of news that we did get today is that Joe Biden is forgiving $10,000 in student debt for borrowers, earning less than $250. No, $125,000 a year. Excuse me. I had something in my contact lens and I couldn't see that one. Um, but it seems to me that that doesn't quite live up to the promise, or at least how it was campaigned on during the campaign and primaries um, and general election in 2020. Um, do you feel a little bit let down by the fact that it's only $10,000? Is that what it looks like to you to be fighting for these issues and for constituents? I, I want to see more, but not necessarily in the way of canceling student debt. I think that by doing this, we are remedying a symptom of an overwhelming illness. And I think that the higher education system in this country is broken. And we need to see investments into community colleges. We need to see investments into trade schools. We need to see predatory lending practices banned. Because if we simply erase student debt without erasing the system that allowed this problem to happen to begin with, we're setting up an entire new generation to have to deal with the issues that the generations before us have had to deal with. And so I'd like to see more on not just debt delivery, but restructuring the education system to ensure that this kind of problem does not happen again. It's a really important point. And I believe it there. I mean, I think the, the topic of student debt is so funny. And the people who are making the policy paid like pay $10,000. For college. That's why they think $10,000 forgiven in student debt is a lot, because that was their total tuition in 1932. Okay, I'm going to be quiet. Thank you, Olivia Juliana, for being here, as always. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.